Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Tea Time Tuesday. I'm Rashan Gidwani, and joining me on this episode today is Miss Susan Lim, a Senior Relationship Manager here at Philip Capital. We'll be discussing the relationship between our finances and our mental well-being. Hi, Susan. Thank you so much for joining me on the program. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks for inviting me here. So it's 2022. 2023 is just around the corner. Um, there's rising interest rates. You know, there might be a recession. All of this can bring economic uncertainty to a person's mind, and they might not know how to cope, right? So there's definitely an intrinsic value between our finances and our mental well-being. But before we discuss that in its entirety, can we first off define what mental well-being is? When you talk about, um, you know, the changes that we are experiencing today compared to what happened 20 years ago, you know, the rising interest rate is actually eroding our wealth, okay? So in doing so, right, I mean, I'm sure some people will experience sleepless nights, you know, because they, they saw that their portfolio actually uh, lost the value and then they may have to extend working and then prolong whatever plan they have made 20 years ago. So I'm sure this kind of situation will affect you mentally, okay? So mental wellness means that your ability to cope with the emotions in life how you relate with people and handle the adversity in life so that, you know, you are not, you know, throw tantrum at others or your family people, you know. So your, your mental wellness is really very important. It's also partially related to how well you manage your finances. Can you expound upon some of the factors um, that are happening in the market right now? The interest rates rise to almost 3.5, 3.8% compared to what it was in the past, which is 1.8%. What else is happening right now that um, may affect individuals' well-being? Because of the rising interest rate, you know, businesses may shrink their business, their operations and they may have downsizing their people. So if for an individual, you may be getting this amount of income previously, but with the downsizing, either you're out of job and if you have too many mortgages on hand or loans, then you feel a pinch to pay all this thing. I'm sure all these kind of situations will affect you emotionally, okay? And then also affect your health. So do you have enough funds to buffer for all the additional costs that comes with it? And sometimes it may give stress to your family because you have to make adjustment to your lifestyle. I'm sure you have to really consider all these things, you know? So what can we do at this moment? Make some adjustment to the changes and then, you know, be positive thinking and not because of all these changes in the market and affect us. And then we start to have depression and we start to, you know, throw the anger on our family people or our co-workers. I think this is something that, you know, we should not do that. So there definitely is a relationship between our finances and our mental well-being. And just like you mentioned, if our finances are suffering, then an individual can suffer from depression, anxiety, high levels of stress, and this isn't good for the individual or his or her family, their spouse, their children, their parents, their whole community and everybody they engage with, right? Family and friends and colleagues as well. So in an extreme situation, when an individual is suffering from lack of mental well-being, um, would you say that they then have rising healthcare costs? Because you, have, you may have sleepless night, you know, because of the stress that you have, you know, and then, so how can you manage it? Even if you go for your jogging exercise, you know, to release the stress, but constantly the money problem will always be on your mind. So how can you manage on that part? Maybe you have to relook at your finances. How can you make adjustment to your lifestyle so that it will not affect your health and it will not affect your personal life? You know, you relook at how you can make things better for yourself. Okay, how you can make things better for yourself because the end goal is to obviously feel good, right? Um, disproportionate to the fact that your finances are going up or down. I think that's the goal for anybody in life. Now, let's talk about that some more. Some of the things I like to do uh, to help me sleep at night is maybe journal. I like to exercise. But of course, if I'm wondering, you know, if I'm going to get a raise or if I'm not going to get a raise or if I'm going to lose my job, then chances are I won't sleep so well at night. Um, what are other things that people can do to help them cope? How do they reassess their finances? They may have set up a budget plan for themselves with this new income and then, you know, the lifestyle has to be changed. 
probably you may have to relook in uh, not taking too much loans, probably cut back on some of the mortgage loans. Or maybe if you have two cars in the household, you reduce to one instead. And if you have a domestic helper, maybe you may have to cut, you know, probably, uh, you know, both of you have, both husband and wife have to manage on the, how to send the kids to school or whatever, this kind of issues. By doing the budgeting, and then, you know, with the help of an uh, advisor, can actually help give you some insight on how can you look at your finances and make things better for you in your life. I mean, basically, hard times do not last for long. But we have to plan, we have to plan ahead. What's going to happen in the next few years? I'm sure you do not want to have sleepless night. You want to be very comfortable in life, you know. You plan something, okay, I will stop work at a certain age, you know. You can enjoy your golden years, you know, by going holiday, you know. And then, you know, no change in your lifestyle. Okay, and you can still go for your morning tea and you can go for your, you know, afternoon tea every time. You don't need to worry and no need to work, you know. That's a very, that's an ideal life that we want, you know. Absolutely. Rather than, you know, continue to uh, do some odd jobs just to supplement the income. I think we've been working for so many years, you know. It's a time that we want to relax, take things easy, I'm sure. Yeah, and then maybe spend more me time with yourself. Yes, and with start a hobby which you wanted to do when you were younger, but because of your commitment, you couldn't do it. Now you can do it. Your me time and your hobby. I love that. Make some time for myself. Yes. Wow, okay. You've been a financial advisor for quite a while. Right. Right? How long exactly? 20 years. 20 years. So you've got a wealth of experience. Let's discuss some personal stories that you have. <laughs> extreme cases. I'm sure our viewers and listeners would love to know. When I was working in the bank previously, I saw the crisis back in the 80s and uh, the 90s. You know, that one, the Indonesian crisis was very bad. I saw a lot of Indonesians uh, because the rupiah was crash, a very big crash. All these Indonesian customers come into the bank with bags of US dollar. They just want to put it here and they go to one of the foreign banks in Singapore to deposit their funds, okay? And that's why, you know, in Orchard Road, there's a lot of Indonesian communities there, okay? So I think these people are the ones that actually came during the, the last 90s crisis where Suharto administration time, you know, they came over here. So, you know, and, you know, from all these experiences, I can see that, you know, you know, sometimes political situations uh, will also affect the, the finances just like what happened in the 90s. And today, the start of the Ukraine war also caused a lot of problems between uh, Russia, oil supply, gold price, and, you know, interest rate rising inflation. I'm sure these kind of things will also affect us. So how do you cope with the changes in your life? Remain positive, make adjustment to your life. And if you have a financial advisor working with you, we can share our experience with the client and let them make an assessment whether should you take on additional risks, okay? Or you should take a calculated risk. So normally when I do a portfolio, it is always both sides. Aggressive for growth and defensive for stability. In case when things happen, you need money, you can take from there, okay? And always, must always have, take care of yourself. You are the most important asset. If you add on your properties, you know, having more assets to you, are you enhancing the coverage on yourself, which is the most important asset? Because increasing stress also means that your health might be affected. Are you having enough, you know, cost to take care of you in case you need to pay for additional medical checks or whatever, you know? I'm not saying that you're no good, but uh, we have more stress. It might affect us. So it's better to enhance our coverage on, you know, defensive portion. It can be your retirement plan healthcare costs. So you always must look at, you know, when you are expanding, you know, your wealth by accumulating more assets, right? You must at the same time get yourself additional coverage to ensure yourself against risk, okay? So this is called, you know, risk management, taking care of yourself first, okay? And adding on your assets. So in the past, people are always looking at adding assets, but they forgot about covering themselves against risk. You know, healthcare or sickness is something that we cannot control, okay? But this is something that's very important today. I'm sure the COVID situation has actually proved to everybody. Nobody expect COVID, but it just come. But when the start of the COVID, everybody is caught off guard and so many economies is shut down. What happened to the businesses? 
And now that we reopen, how does it impact us totally? And when we talk that, we thought that, you know, this COVID can be controlled, sudden start of the war is something beyond our control. So I think these few years we're experiencing a lot of changes. So we really need to relook at things that is happening now, which is post-COVID. We cannot base on the model which is pre-COVID because the situation and market condition has changed totally. Okay, there's always going to be changes. Mm. I really enjoyed talking with you. You've got a wealth of experience. You really opened up my mind to the idea that um, an individual can acquire more assets. Mm. There's no harm in trying to be richer, quote unquote. Yes, of course. Uh, and making more money. But if you don't protect yourself and if you don't take out a, a coverage plan and, and you don't account for risk, then you're not, you're not your own best friend in the sense. Yes, obviously. There's no point in having a Lamborghini if you can't sleep at night, right? You, you won't be able to drive it. Right. It's not a good situation. Thank you so much, Susan, for your time and all your insight. Thank you. Let's talk again soon. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.